Good evening and a warm welcome to our friends, family, colleagues, and special guests. We are delighted to have you join us for the first virtual Missouri Mental Health Champions Awards Ceremony. My name is Patty Henry, and I have had the honor of serving as the Executive Director of the Missouri Mental Health Foundation. As of July 1st, I moved to a consultant role as I transitioned towards retirement at the end of 2020. For nine years, I have been entrusted to lead the Missouri Mental Health Foundation. I can't imagine a better opportunity than working with so many incredible individuals and organizations to raise awareness and public understanding of issues that impact individuals and families living with developmental disabilities, mental illness, and substance use disorders. This has not only been the opportunity of a lifetime and a wonderful, exciting, and rewarding job, but it's also been a true passion and personally impactful. I have been blessed with friendships, support, and encouragement from so many of you for so many years. So thank you. Thank you for your support. Thank you for supporting the foundation, our mission, and our many events and activities. Thank you for the many treasured memories. It's now time to pass the torch to new leadership. I would like to introduce you to the new executive director of the Missouri Mental Health Foundation, Connie Cunningham. Good evening. I echo the comments from Patty about the commitment and support from so many who believe in and are dedicated to the work of the Missouri Mental Health Foundation. Thank you for all you do. Yet none of this would have happened without the leadership and caring Patty has put into making the foundation the strong organization that it is. Patty has led with determination and grace, giving her all to cultivate the mission and move the foundation to its current level of accomplishment. She is leaving some big shoes to fill. I am humbled and honored to step into the role of executive director and look forward to meeting and working with the many individuals and partners that are an essential part of our purpose. Now to proceed with our evening celebration. It is at events such as tonight when we come together to share a common goal a goal to continue our journey of raising awareness and public understanding of issues impacting individuals and families living with mental illness, developmental disabilities, and substance use disorders. Increasing public awareness and understanding of mental health disorders will help dissolve prejudice and discrimination and open doors to treatment and equal opportunity for participation in schools, communities, and the workforce. This evening serves to remind us all just how important and how necessary our work is. Thank you for supporting the Missouri Mental Health Foundation and for joining us this evening to recognize and celebrate the accomplishments of our award recipients. I am now delighted to introduce to you the many individuals leading the way for the foundation's growth, our board of directors. They are Terry Trafton, President, Mary Perrigan, Vice President, Stacy Welling, our Treasurer and Secretary, Alan Bumgardner, John Chidester, Liddell Flowers, Wendy Hayes, Mike Keller, Jane Pfefferkorn, Deborah Walker, and Dr. Ann Deaton. Thank you for your ongoing dedication and commitment to the foundation. Also, I'd like to take a moment to recognize and thank our silent auction donors. For the first time, we hosted a virtual silent auction leading up to this evening's events. We had many fabulous items donated, including electronics, jewelry, home decor, experienced Missouri packages, and so much more. Thank you so much for your donations. In addition, we would like to say thank you to all of you that participated in the silent auction bid process. We will be in touch with individuals with a winning bid and get your item or items to you as soon as possible. Again, thank you all for your support. Now it is my pleasure to introduce to you the board president of Missouri Mental Health Foundation, Terry Trafton. Terry serves as the president CEO of ComCare Behavioral Health a network of community behavioral health care providers in Missouri working to help people access quality behavioral health care. 
He also serves as president CEO of the subsidiary Alternatives EAP, which partners with employers to provide employee wellness services. Terry has over 25 years of experience in healthcare settings, including behavioral health, community, and hospital healthcare. Good evening. I am truly honored to serve as the president of the board of directors for the Missouri Mental Health Foundation. Through our efforts behind the scenes or out front, the foundation has been involved with several trainings, educational activities, media and awareness campaigns, community resource events, and conferences. It has been a very busy and rewarding year for the Missouri Mental Health Foundation, given all the changes occurring in this very difficult time. In our program, you will also find highlights of some of our 2019-2020 events and activities, including our annual Mental Health Champions Banquet, the Real Voices, Real Choices Consumer Conference, the Directors Creativity Art Competition Showcase, our inclusive golf program, and the hashtag Stop the Stigma Mo billboard campaign and more. In addition, we give thanks to Hub and Spoke marketing firm for our new look, website, and marketing collaterals that have been rebranded. Times are changing and so are we. Patty Henry, please join me. The board and staff want to take a moment to recognize you and your contributions to the Missouri Mental Health Foundation as the outgoing executive director. Patty is a planner and unaware of this slight deviation off script. Sorry, Patty. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> have this beautiful plaque oh, for you yeah. and these lovely flowers. I don't, can you see those? Oh. I have a few things to say. Thank you. So hold Thank with you. me. Patty has led the Missouri Mental Health Foundation for over nine years. After her successful career at the Department of Mental Health, Patty was brought on part-time to continue to develop and grow the foundation, which was established 12 years ago. She expanded the foundation's operations, staffing, and volunteer support of our events, making it the successful foundation it is today. We are grateful to Patty's service, dedication, and commitment to further our mission of reducing stigma and discrimination and fostering inclusion in the community. To quote one of our founding board members, Kathy Carter, it has been a special privilege to have served under the leadership of Patty. Her incredible kindness, joyful spirit, purposeful life, and integrity guide her heart. She has enriched the lives of so many in need through her vision, leadership, knowledge, compassion, and ability to encourage and inspire. Patty, we would like to present you with this crown award for your service and this beautiful purple orchid to thank you for your leadership and hard work. We hope that you find peace and joy in your transition into retirement. And of course, we secretly hope to see you back as a volunteer. We will miss you, Patty. And I will miss you. <laughs> I would just, I'll try. Um, <laughs> thank you. As I said earlier, um, first, I work with an incredible board. You can't, uh, you can't beat when you go to work every day uh, with true passion in your heart, and you get to work around so many people. Uh, my board of directors, the staff, our partners, um, many individuals, consumers, and families we've had the chance to work with and the opportunity to become friends, um, you don't always get that opportunity. And so I'll have to say, as um, closing out on my years of uh, employment, I couldn't 
had a better opportunity. I couldn't have picked uh, better folks uh, to end this work life and uh, move forward. I look forward to the next chapter, um, whatever that may bring. It may bring more volunteer opportunities, more work. Um, regardless, I'm sure in one way or the other, a passion will continue. I will always be an advocate for individuals and families that live with mental illness, developmental disabilities, and substance use disorders. And I look forward to following the foundation and the great work that they will continue to do. So thank you. Thank you, Terry. And thanks all of you. You did it. You did good. Thank you, Patty. As we move forward, we ask all of you to join us in finding opportunities to pass on facts and positive attitudes about individuals and families living with mental illness, developmental disabilities, and substance use disorders. Together, we can raise social awareness that individuals with special needs have many different abilities that play important roles within our communities and work environments. We are very grateful for the partnerships, donations, assistance as we move forward in battling stigma and discrimination. Our vision is that Missourians will appreciate the importance of mental health and the foundation can assist in restoring hope to persons living with mental illness, developmental disabilities, and substance use disorders. And now it's my pleasure to introduce you to our Master of Ceremonies, Rod Smith, voted the number one local TV personality for several years. Rod has been delivering the sports news on KRCG 13 for three decades. He has covered many major sporting events and championship games. His coverage of local high school sports is considered some of the best in the Midwest. Perhaps he's best known, however, for Rod's big old fish. While he loves to cover sports, Rod also has a passion to help great causes like the work of the Missouri Mental Health Foundation. Thank you, Rod, and please join me in welcoming Rod Smith. Terry, thank you very much. It is an honor to be with you tonight, and thank you for spending a little time with us. This is one of my favorite nights of the year where we can celebrate with some real champions. And this evening, we're celebrating our 13th anniversary of the Missouri Mental Health Champions Award Ceremony. It's the first ever virtual event. Every year, a lot of work goes into this, making it bigger and better. And this is only possible because of the generous support of our sponsors. Without you, this event would not be possible. We would like to start by acknowledging the generous contributions of the gold sponsors. Alkermes is a fully integrated biopharmaceutical company that applies its scientific and technological expertise to develop innovative medicines in the fields of neuroscience and oncology to address the unmet needs and challenges of people living with debilitating diseases. Archway Institute is an organization in St. Louis that provides hope by educating and spreading awareness to individuals, families, and communities about the realities of substance use and co-occurring mental health disorders. ITIS, empowering individuals through advocacy and support. ITIS is an organization in Jackson County whose mission is to support individuals with developmental disabilities and their families with services that respect their choices increases their opportunities, encourages their independence, and assists their inclusion in all aspects of the community. Learfield operates four state news networks focused on multi-platform public education campaigns for state agencies, associations, and nonprofit groups. 
Missouri Coalition for Community Behavioral Health Care. The coalition includes 33 member agencies providing access to quality behavioral health care for all Missouri citizens in need of such services. MU Healthcare, Missouri Psychiatric Center, is committed to the behavioral health care needs of people and families in our community. Ozark Center Comprehensive Behavioral Health Services. Ozark Center is the largest and most comprehensive behavioral health care provider in the Joplin area, providing comprehensive behavioral health services to children, adults, and families in the four surrounding states. Synovian Pharmaceuticals Incorporated. Synovian is building on a track record of discovery, development, and commercialization of important therapies with a robust and growing portfolio of treatments to address serious psychiatric, neurological, and respiratory conditions. On behalf of the Missouri Mental Health Foundation, we would like to extend our sincere gratitude for your very generous sponsorships. In addition, the Missouri Mental Health Foundation is very grateful for the support and contributions of our silver sponsors. They are Ameren, Missouri, Arthur Center Community Health, Capital Region Medical Center, Compass Health Network, Family Counseling Center Behavioral Health, Independent Living Resource Center Incorporated, Missouri Association of County Developmental Disability Services, Missouri Association of Rehabilitation Facilities, Missouri Developmental Disabilities Council, Missouri Recovery Network, NetSmart, Places for People, SSM Health, St. Mary's Hospital, Swope Health Services, Tri-County Mental Health Services, Truman Medical Center Behavioral Health. On behalf of the Missouri Mental Health Foundation, we would like to thank all of our Silver Level sponsors for their support. The Department of Mental Health provides services to approximately 170,000 Missourians each year, many of whom are making major progress in overcoming the challenges of their mental illness, developmental disabilities, and substance use disorders. Unfortunately, only a few of their personal stories are known. The Mental Health Champion Ceremony is a great opportunity to share with you some of these stories and celebrate their accomplishments. There are so many individuals across Missouri deserving of this award. As a nominee, you should be very proud of your accomplishments, your success in your personal development, your positive contributions to your community. Each of you deserves special acknowledgement for your remarkable work and dedication. We'd like to take a few moments to individually recognize each of our award nominees. Brandon Avery, O'Fallon. Jordan Davidson, Nixa. Jamie Ray Edmondson, Kirksville. Jennifer Goodluck Kemp, Poplar Bluff. James William Graham, Kirksville. Amber Lucille Greathouse, Rolla. Scott Hayes, Springfield. Carol Hilburn, St. Louis. Alex Ott, St. Louis. Kaylee Ozzy, Belgrade. Damian Paul, Waynesville. Patrick J. Purdy, Cape Girardeau. Robert Riley II, Dittmer. Angela Rommel, Poplar Bluff. James J. Taylor, Exeter. Michelle Tibbs, St. Louis. Tim Watkins, Kirkwood. Craig M. Whaley, Joplin. Congratulations on your nomination. You are an inspiration to many, and we wish you continued success. Now it's time to celebrate the champions. True stars rise to the top, not by chance, but through purpose and passion. The heart of a champion is someone who rises above the ordinary to do the extraordinary, who leaves the world better than they found it, and never fails to look for the best in others or give the best of themselves. It is both an honor and a privilege to introduce you to our guests of honor, the 2020 Missouri Mental Health Champion Award recipients. 
The recipients of the Mental Health Champions Award are selected from nominations received all over the state of Missouri. The Mental Health Champions Award recognizes individuals living with mental illness, developmental disabilities, and in recovery for substance use disorders who make a positive contribution to their community, exemplify commitment and vision, and whose actions have increased the potential for independence in others with similar disorders. The first recipient of the Mental Health Champions Award tonight is Tim Conroy, a tireless advocate. Tim openly shares his story and experiences while also encouraging others to have faith in their recovery journey. Here is Tim Conroy's encouraging story. To meet Timothy Conroy today, you would not guess he came from a dark past, full of chaos, pain, and even prison time. And while he must still cope with and treat his behavioral health disorder every day, he has an amazing outlook on life, one that is focused on helping others who struggle like he did. You have to take personal responsibility for your own life. That's something I had to learn in the penitentiary. Um, I always claimed it wasn't my fault. I had a psychotic break. But you know what? And a nurse pointed this out to me. I knew I needed help. I chose not to get it. It was my fault. Once I started taking personal responsibility for my life and my actions, whatever they be, my life changed. Tim uses his passion and life experience to help others push through their darkness. And I can say honestly that I think that my pain drives my passion. Remembering, as I say, the darkness. You know, and that's one thing that's where I, that's where peers connect. Because I've been in that dark place. I've been in that hole that had no other solutions other than death or drugs or alcohol. And I know what that darkness and that pain is like. And now I know what it feels like to feel good, to actually laugh, to actually enjoy being around people and seeing them laugh. He also gives back to a system that once locked him up. Tim plays a critical role educating law enforcement officers through the Missouri Crisis Intervention Team, or CIT, Council. Tim is very valuable to us in, in speaking for the lived experience of uh, consumers in the state that, that we in CIT respond to. So to hear Tim's voice and his advocation for those uh, in crisis are very big to us and how we frame our response uh, to those individuals that we serve in our communities. And Tim is very passionate about self-care. He's very passionate about actually uh, working with the law enforcement community. He didn't always have positive relationships with law enforcement, um, but now he does. And so he really wants to make sure that they get the help that they need. Tim also has a unique and respectful way of correcting language and actions that feed stigma. And if I rethink re back to the first interaction I had with Tim, and it was, as I go back to a words matter issue, I, I, said, I said a comment and Tim called me out on it and I remember that to this day. I wasn't being mean or hateful, but I didn't realize that words affect a person differently. And Tim brought that to me and I really uh, have learned a lot from Tim. But as Tim continues to go out there and train and work with law enforcement, uh, he's the one that's very courageous because he selfishly shares his story and all the trials that he's been through in his life uh, to put that out there to train others that it's okay to work with law enforcement and to trust us uh, when sometimes those interactions have not been so positive. Tim's proudest accomplishment is being a certified peer specialist. He thrives on sharing his journey of recovery and encourages others to hang on to hope. I think the thing that inspires me most is the way that he uses his own personal story, um, especially around suicide. He is very passionate about suicide prevention. He has a very personal history with suicide, not only of people he's lost, but his own story um, of suicide um, thoughts and things like that. And he has turned that into a story of helping others with prevention. Because hope is the belief that we have the ability and the opportunity to engage in the recovery process. Recovery from whatever. 
And so many people need recovery. And it's not just mental illness. They need recovery from their pain. So we want people to have hope, but you can have hope if you give up. Tim is a mentor to many throughout the state and a kind and loyal friend, always available and willing to listen. I've watched him just change people's lives. People um, who have had similar stories to him that didn't think that they had hope. I've watched him bring hope to their lives. And that's what makes a mental health champion, someone who can use their own story to change people's lives. The main thing I learned, the main thing that I find the most amazing and that I try to share with people is that you have a voice, you have control, you have the ability to mold your destiny. And that's what makes Timothy Conroy a mental health champion. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Tim Conroy. Wow, fancy. Good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us this evening, and thank you for coming here to see me, me and my fellow recipients receive our rewards, even though it's virtually. That's the age we live in nowadays. At least I got to accept it without a mask on. So that's always a positive. Um, you know, when I was nominated for this award, I was very overwhelmed. And I had to remember all the people that have helped me in the last eight years as I've really gotten serious about my recovery, um, who have taught me all the tricks, who have taught me all the coping skills, who have sat with me in my bad times. And some of you are with us tonight. I, I thank you from the bottom of my heart because truly, you know, you're, you're a big reason that I'm here. My support network and the people I've worked with and my mentors. Um, I, I'd like to call out just one particular one, Sarah Earle, who was my peer instructor, peer specialist instructor, uh, many, many years ago, and now I have the honor of working with her. So it's amazing where recovery can take you. And I think the one message I kind of wanted to get out tonight was the one thing I've learned about recovery is about being true to yourself and living in the moment and accepting responsibility for the things that happen in your life. And I found that by truly being me, by truly being able to live my passions, I mean, I'm a 51-year-old 50, man who um, basically has no specific bosses. I work as a contract worker. I do a lot of public speaking. And I get to live my passions every day. And how many people get to say that? You know, I get to truly be me. And when I go places, I dress like me. I don't wear suits and ties. That's not me. And that's why I come before you in a, in a very nice shirt and very nice slacks. Because I have to be true to myself and who I really am. And I encourage you, each and every one of you, to find your passions. Find those things that wake you up in the morning. Find those things that get you out of bed and grasp onto them. Find a way to live those passions, even if it means volunteering. And a lot of the stuff I do, I do by volunteer because I love what I do. And I really want to thank the people from the CIT Council for nominating me, uh, especially Kim Hicks and Jason Klaus. Um, it's been an incredible ride. I spent three years in the penitentiary. Now I'm in the state CIT council giving advice to officers. So recovery is an incredible journey. But when you are true to yourself and when you live your passions, well, truly amazing things can happen. Uh, I never expected this. And I, I'm so honored. And I thank you all for coming tonight. Congratulations, Tim. Thank you. Our next recipient of the Mental Health Champions Award is living her best life, 
where she continues to show those individuals living with disabilities and those individuals that do not that she has ideas, rights, and freedoms that can't and won't be affected by her limitations. Here is Candace Cunningham's inspiring story. Think of your disability as an ability that nobody else has. Meet Candace Cunningham, a real go-getter from the moment she came into this world. Candace was born with cerebral palsy and has faced that challenge her entire life, but it has never stopped her from pursuing her dreams and living the life she wants. She's a shining star. She's a beautiful young lady and I mean, it's not to say she did not have challenges through school. She definitely did. She's experienced things that, um, that I don't wish on anyone. But regardless, she is a trooper. So, Candace just takes life by the horns. You know, she doesn't really worry about anything. She's kind of fearless. I would describe Candace as fun and enthusiastic, um, charming. She is uh, has a great sense of humor. She has a tremendous sense of passion and direction and drive. Candace is also described as determined, which is a quality easily seen in her. Despite the barriers that face individuals with disabilities, she boldly pursued and obtained a bachelor's degree from the University of Central Missouri in Warrensburg and then tenaciously went after competitive employment. When I met Candace, she had about two more years to go on her college degree. And I kind of I kind of thought she might give up, but the more I got to know her, I realized that wasn't an option. <laughs> she just, somehow or another, she was going to get through it. And she did, and then she landed a really great job right out of the chute after that. And then um, we, we uh, sucked her up here. <laughs> and she's been just rocking and rolling ever since. Now Candace's passion is helping other young adults like herself. Instead of getting a sub-minimum wage job for people with disabilities, we want them to know that they can get a job making the same wage as everyone else. And um, they have a purpose in life. She spent tons of extra time beyond her paid job counseling the students and being available to them and just trying to show them what it looks like to live and work in this world and, and to do your best no matter what. And that's just always been her approach. I have the luxury of seeing Candace every single week um, working directly with youth and seeing the impact, the direct impact that she's making in their lives. They look to her as a leader, they look to her as a friend, they look to her as a role model, and watching her shine in that setting and watching her be a beacon of hope for a lot of these kids is really just an incredible thing that I am so, so fortunate to just kind of be a bystander of and get to be a part of. Without a doubt, in her current job as the self-advocacy technical support for People First, she's an inspiration to every life she touches. She smiles all the time and I just um, say to her basically, you know, continue to let your smile change the world and never let the world change your smile. I think Candace is the perfect Missouri mental health champion because she really is a representation of how to um, use your own skills and strengths to better impact the lives of others. Um, she has, you know, as she's grown and as she's developed, she's, you know, created so many wonderful things um, in her own life. And then she uses that. She uses her voice. She uses her advocacy skills to show others that they can do the same. Never give up. And if nobody else believes in you, you have to believe in yourself. And that is why Candace Cunningham is a mental health champion. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Candace Cunningham. Thank you, everyone. Um, it's a great pleasure to accept this award today. Um, I just want to say, say thank you to the mental health um, uh, uh, 
committee for giving me um giving me this award and thank you to ETOS and Georgia Mule for um introducing me to the mental health champion. Um I grew up with cerebral palsy and IDD, um uh, intellectual disability sorry. And um as you as one might know that's challenging in itself, but having a disability didn't stop me from doing what I want to do. And that's going to college and getting a degree and getting a full-time job. Um, I want to say thank you to my mom, Karen Cunningham, for always being there for me, even though she wanted to talk me. No, <laughs> and uh, thank you to um, my book we have, Council Karen Dean, who probably also wanted to talk me, and uh, Dr. Mayfield from University of Central Missouri, Central Missouri, that was my accessibility counselor. <coughs> Today, we're, we're still guiding and many more that I couldn't name off. I have um, a degree in child in human services and a great job working at University of Missouri, Kansas City Institute from him for human development um, as a self advocate, mainly working with Missouri people folks <coughs> and with if and with that I I still teach myself more things, but I can teach others that no matter if you have a quote unquote disability, um, you can do anything that you set your mind to and just never give up. Um, know that you you are the one that chooses your future for you. Nobody else can and just be aware, know that mental health is around as everywhere. Whether you have it, you can get it at a, any stage of life. Um, so it's really great for this champion to break the stigma of mental health and get more education. Um, so I just want to say, don't give up. And don't listen to people who are, are negative or talk down to you. And you can do whatever you want to do. Thank you. Congratulations, Candace. What an inspiring story. Our last recipient of the Mental Health Champions Award tonight is a beacon of hope. He is driven by his work and fights for those struggling on their path to recovery. Here is John Stuckey's powerful story. As a child, John Stuckey struggled with sleep, anger, and depression. These difficulties eventually led him into self-medicating with alcohol and drugs. After college, his journey brought him to St. Louis, where heroin became his worst addiction. You know, really went down that spiral for about five years, um, in and out of treatment centers and, um, you know, struggling to grasp, uh, in and out of jobs, couldn't maintain jobs, um, you know, just really kind of struggled uh, with the substances and, you know, heroin, heroin had a whole different, um, you know, level of addictiveness to me, like all the other drugs and things, it was easy to put down, but um, when heroin caught up to me, it was, uh, it got its hooks into me pretty good and I didn't know how to get the barbs out. It was Thanksgiving of 2012 when John hit bottom and finally listened to the advice of family and friends to go into transitional housing and begin medication treatment with Vivitrol. This was a turning point where John looked beyond himself to give back, doing what he does best, networking. Moving into transitional living, my eyes were kind of opened up to like some of the needs 
and the issues and barriers that people had um, getting services. So I felt like I needed to do something to play my role in it. Um, so I'd start up a coffee company and I started networking and talking to people and doing um, what I enjoy doing and just getting out there and <clears throat> you know meeting new people and talking about what's going on. His vision of how do I bring others along with me? How do I raise some funds to help others get into recovery? I think when his life got transformed, he immediately thought about those others out there that, that weren't in recovery and he wanted to bring those along. I think John has just a, a confidence and positivity around the work he does. And he, he has his own story, um, but unless really prompted, that's not what he leads with and that's not what he shares. And so he shares with solution and he wants to always look at how can we improve things or how can we make things better and, and for everybody else, not for John. That coffee company John started became today's Archway Institute. His vision focused on linking resources to help as many people as possible. That's, I think, his greatest asset is, is connecting all these great organizations that are doing great work but don't necessarily know what the other one is doing. Um, and John's done an awesome job at seeing that and uh, it's kind of uniting people together. And that's how he did it for me, and he, he does it for the community, and that community has grown exponentially since I think he's you know really taken a step into it. Um, because collaboration, you know, it's just like recovery, right? Like you're not going to do this by yourself, and there's not a one size fits all for uh, recovery. And you know, people need these different resources and access to them um, because it only takes you know one barrier to trip you over and you know you're 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 spiraling out of control so anything we can do to play safety nets and connect people and really just show people that um, <clears throat> there is hope out there john's passion for his work and his dedicated peer support has brought thousands of struggling individuals into a life of recovery not to mention the hundreds of thousands of dollars he has raised he's he constantly sees opportunities. He constantly sees uh, possibilities, and he's constantly looking for, uh, you know, improvements, ways to change things, and opportunities to make a difference. True compassion, love, and tolerance for the still struggling is what we need, and that's what he stayed true to. His values matches his actions, matches his words, and that's why I believe he's a champion. And he works to make sure other people are getting the care they need and figuring out how to make it all work in different systems and different places across maybe different boundaries or agencies that haven't had that opportunity before. And so it's that it's being that champion for the cause in, in every room he steps into that makes him deserving of this award. You know, everything happens for a reason and um, and, you know, it doesn't always happen in our time, but it happens in God's time. But um, it always happens for the, for the greater good. And even though sometimes it's hard to understand in that moment on what that purpose or meaning was behind whatever happened, um, <clears throat> just know that uh, you have no idea the impact positively that will come out of this. And that is why John Stuckey is a mental health champion. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome John Stuckey. So yeah, I'd just like to say how honored I am uh, to receive this award and really wanted to recognize uh, the other recipients and the other nominees for all the passion and drive and work that they do in this community. I know a lot of them and um, you know their dedication is just uh, tireless work uh, that means a lot to this community uh, also wanted to thank patty and her crew they've been awesome through this whole process and <clears throat> i remember the moment when i got the phone call and it was uh it was patty calling and left a voicemail saying we got some exciting news for you and i was like immediately stopped in my tracks and, and really kind of got a moment to reflect on the last eight years of working in this field and being in recovery and 
all the people that really have had impact on my life and mentoring me and collaborative efforts that we've really been able to put together and I'd be uh, you know not here without their support and so really wanted to recognize a couple of those people and groups that have uh, been there for me along the way and you know first my family and Emily who have uh, been there with me uh, through my journey and been there supporting me um, and the Archway crew and Mark Shields uh, for for them nominating me for this award in the first place, um, but also the work that uh, has been done through uh, the Menzi family and Arca, um, who have really mentored me and take me under their wing, along with uh, <clears throat> uh, my boys at the Recovery House, GBRH. Uh, love you guys, and you know now looking forward with some of the groups that I'm working with, but. Uh, my Alchemy's team that uh, have uh, brought me on and have really been an inspiring group to work with. And, you know, this award just really kind of reflects just <clears throat> not only the work that I've done, but the work that this community has done and coming together and collaborating. Um, and it's just an honor to be up here and be with you all and uh, wish we could be in person. But due to the circumstances, that's not possible. So, hi, I love you guys and uh, appreciate everything. So thanks. Congratulations, John, and all of our mental health champions. Now we'd like to bring back our executive director, Connie Cunningham. We would like to extend our sincere appreciation to Rod Smith for his ongoing commitment and dedication to this event and to our community. Uh, thank you, Rod, for another great year of serving as our MC. In addition, I would also like to take this moment to recognize and thank those on the planning committee. This being our first experience hosting virtual events, we had so much to learn. Our committee took on this challenge with grace, with commitment, and for this and for the countless hours the volunteers put in towards this event, we thank you. We could not have done it without you. As we end our program, I would like to add that I hope each of you is leaving inspired by the amazing stories shared with you this evening. There are so many individuals who overcome many of their daily challenges and champion in their communities and across the state to bring awareness and understanding of issues impacting individuals and families living with mental illness, developmental disabilities, and substance use disorders. Missouri Mental Health Foundation will continue to find ways to speak out against stigma and to raise awareness and public understanding about mental health conditions. Thank you for joining this evening. Please stay safe and healthy, and we look forward to seeing you next year.